Hello Year 3 and welcome back to our entry day and we are learning this term all about ancient Egypt so let's find out which lesson we are going to be doing next. For part 2 of our entry day we are learning to be able to write following a style so to be successful you are going to be able to recall facts about the discovery of Tutankhamun's tomb. You are going to be able to plan your ideas and write in the style of a news report. Now we're going to be learning this morning about the discovery of Tutankhamun's tomb. Now Tutankhamun became pharaoh in 1336 BC at just nine years of age. He ruled until he was 18 when he died suddenly in 1327 BCE. He is famous today because his tomb was left undisturbed for almost 3,000 years after his death without being broken into by grave robbers like the other tombs of many other pharaohs. Archaeologists discovered the tomb in 1922, uncovering thousands of precious offerings as well as Tutankhamun's mummy. Here are some photos taken from the tomb of Tutankhamun. You can see the walls are very decorative, brightly coloured, with beautiful paintings on them. We've got the tomb, the mummy here in the sarcophagus of King Tutankhamun. So within that sarcophagus, that coffin, is uh, the, mum the mummified King Tut. And then here are some of his treasures that he wanted to take with him to the afterlife. So this is what the tomb looked like. So we have the entrance to the tomb here, the antechamber, full of precious things that he wanted to take with him, and the annex again, full of full of lots of wonderful things that he wanted to take with him to the afterlife. We then had the burial chamber, which is where um, King Tut's sarcophagus was, and the treasury with his most valuable items. But how was Tutankhamun's tomb discovered? Let's have a look at the Tutankhamun's tomb PowerPoint. Journey back in time to 1922, to a time when aeroplanes were very small and did not fly far. To a time when people travelling to Egypt from Britain went by ship. It took two weeks. Howard Carter and Lord Carnarvon. Howard Carter was a British archaeologist working in Egypt. Lord Carnarvon was a rich Englishman with an interest in Egypt. He paid the bills for Howard Carter's work. The people of Egypt buried some of their greatest pharaohs in this Valley of the Kings. By 1922, archaeologists thought they'd found them all. 
Howard Carter worked out that there was still one tomb left, that of Tutankhamun. Early morning on the 3rd of November 1922, in a hot and dusty valley in Egypt. Egyptian workers were searching, digging away sand and stones. They didn't hold out much hope. A young boy crouched a few feet away. His job was to fetch water to workers, to the workers. He sat digging in the sand with a stick. Suddenly, he hit a hard surface. He dug furiously and found a stone step. He stared at it, then covered it over and ran to tell Howard Carter what he'd found. Carter ordered the workers to clear away the sand. Gradually, they found 12 more steps. Then they found the top part of a door made of brick and plaster. On the door was a stamp. This meant the tomb was royal and it was intact. That's what the stamp would have looked like. Carter ordered the workers to cover the steps over again so nobody else would find the tomb. He sent a telegram to Lord Carnarvon in Scotland asking him to come at once. At last, have made wonderful discovery in the valley, a magnificent tomb with seals intact, recovered, so, recovered, so, recovered sand for your arrival. Congratulations, H. Carter. How long would it have taken Lord Carnarvon to arrive from England? See if you can remember from previously in the video. Carnarvon and his daughter, Lady Evelyn, arrived at the town of Luxor two weeks later and met Carter. So if you remember at the beginning of the PowerPoint, it said it would take two weeks to get to Egypt by boat. Next day, Howard Carter asked the workers to break down the door. They found a passageway blocked by rubble. Clearing them away, they found a second door. Carter took an iron bar and made a tiny hole in the top left-hand corner. The bar passed through, so the passage was clear. Carter took a candle and put it up to the hole to test the dangerous gas. Then he widened the hole and looked in. At first he saw nothing, then his eyes adjusted. Can you see anything? asked Lord Carnarvon. Yes, replied Carter. Wonderful things. Both Carter and Lord Carnarvon were desperate to take a closer look, but Egyptian rules said no. Archaeologists had to have permission to dig in Egypt. They had to have an inspector with them when they first went in. Frustrated, they closed up the hole and left one of the workers on guard. Then they got on their donkeys and rode back to Carter's house. Unable to wait, later that same night, Carter returned to the tomb. He made the hole bigger and they squeezed through one by one and dropped onto the floor. They found themselves in a small room. Over 3,000 years had passed since anyone had last entered. They saw a fingerprint left on the painted surface of an oil lamp. The smell of perfume still filled the air. They found many magnificent statues and other items that blinked and glittered in the torchlight. They found a golden throne with figures of Tutankhamun and his wife on it. But Carter was worried. If this was Tutankhamun's tomb, then where was his body? On the wall to the right were two life-size statues of King Tutankhamun. The statues stood opposite each other as if on guard. Carter realised they marked a sealed up entrance to another room. In his book, Howard Carter says he waited for over two months for the official opening of this tomb. How do you think he felt having to wait for two months? Pause the video now and have a think. I bet he was so frustrated because he wanted to get in 
discover everything that was in there and have a proper look through of what he'd found. Lady Evelyn betrayed his secret. So this is Lord Carnarvon's daughter, remember. Howard Carter returned at night and made a small hole near the floor in this wall. They squeezed through to see the tomb itself. Having looked around, he blocked up the hole in the wall and covered the spot with a basket. The following morning, he came back with the inspector, pretending never to have seen the treasures that follow. Trouble began when newspaper reporters from all over the world began to arrive. Carter said they were getting in his way and holding up the work. He decided to sell the exclusive rights to the Times newspaper. No hello and OK magazines in those days. The Egyptians were furious. They said the tomb was in their country and Carter had no right to choose a foreign newspaper. The Egyptian Prime Minister told Carter to remember the tomb was not his. Carter was so angry he locked the tomb and left. They had just lifted the big stone lid off the sarcophagus. They left it swinging. If the ropes broke, it would smash the coffin to pieces. The Egyptians said this showed Howard Carter did not really care about archaeology. Today, Tutankhamun's treasures are famous worldwide. But Tutankhamun himself has always been a shadowy figure, a mere boy propelled to the throne at nine and dead by the age of 19. Dwarfed by the great pharaohs who preceded him and those who followed in his wake. His life story was largely unknown since ancient records were destroyed in antiquity. For more than 3,000 years, Tutankhamun lay almost forgotten here in the traditional burial ground of the pharaohs, Egypt's Valley of the Kings. Until in November 1922, archaeologist Howard Carter and his wealthy patron, the Earl of Carnarvon, made the greatest find of the 20th century. They'd stumbled upon a treasure hoard beyond their wildest dreams. In all, 5,400 artifacts, many of them wrought in solid gold. The Egyptians of Tutankhamun's era prized the precious metal because they believed it would survive for all eternity. They called it the flesh of the gods. The find was a worldwide sensation. Every other royal tomb had been stripped by grave robbers long ago, but here everything was still in place. Carnarvon had unearthed not only priceless treasures, everything Tutankhamun believed he would need in the next life was crammed into his tomb. Carnarvon's extraordinary finds set Egyptologists on a race to fill those gaping holes in our knowledge of the mysterious boy king. High Clear Castle in southern England is the home of the present-day 8th Earl of Carnarvon. His great-grandfather, the 5th Earl, spent 10 years and much of the family fortune searching for the tomb of King Tut. A memento in the family vaults reveals how the triumph was swiftly followed by a mysterious death. There are many ideas that if you disturb an intact tomb of a pharaoh, that something terrible will befall you. This, in fact, is my great-grandfather's cutthroat razor, which, in fact, led to his death. He got bitten by a mosquito, then was um, shaving in the Winter Palace Hotel, and he didn't pay attention to the rather nasty mosquito bite that nicked his face there and um, let the bacteria in. The Earl developed blood poisoning. Before the treasures could even be fully examined, the man who found Tutankhamun was dead. Victim, some said, of the curse of the pharaohs. At the 
precise moment of his death in a Cairo hotel room, the Egyptian capital was plunged into darkness. Was it a simple power cut or something more sinister? Back here at Haifa, here, exactly the same time, his beloved little dog, Susie, suddenly died as well. After a long howl, she expired. So there were some spooky things that happened at the time of the death of my great grandfather. Very spooky indeed. I wonder if Lord Carnarvon suffered the curse of the pharaohs when he discovered the tomb of King Tut and started to excavate it. Maybe he was cursed. Okay, now your task now is to write a short news bulletin about the discovery of Tutankhamun's tomb. You will be a news reporter and if you'd like to as an extension you can record your news bulletin and you can either email it to your year three teacher to the year three Swingate email address or you can tweet it and tag at Swingate Primary. We'd love to see your news bulletins. So the most important thing to include in your news bulletin is the five W's. Who, what, when, where and why. Here are some key phrases that you could include. Good evening, my name is. Reports also said. Coming up on tonight's programme. Just in. Today's headlines. Our top story tonight. We'll be hearing from. Breaking news. Tonight's special report. For further details on today's headlines, we go to our studio. Now you have been emailed a newspaper report script, a news report script, sorry, to your school email addresses. If you would like to print and write on that, you can, or you can type on it, or you can just use it as a guide for the sorts of things you need to include in your news report. So you need to start by introducing yourself, maybe the name of the news company you are representing and where you are reporting from. You're then going to move on to the main story and this is where we need to include our five W's. Who, what, when, where and why. We're then going to have an interview where you name the person that you're interviewing and then maybe ask two or three questions and allow your person that you're interviewing to answer. Maybe you could um, have somebody at home to be your um, the person that you are interviewing or maybe you could get a friend on the phone and, record and hear their voices. And then finally, just finishing off, signing off. How do you feel about the story? What could happen next? And you'll maybe say thank you and good night. Okay, so Swingate News Station. This is where you will be reporting from. If you do not want to do the extension and record your interview, your news bulletin, that's absolutely fine. You can just um, email us your script. But if you would like to do the extension and actually record yourselves, please do. Now, your news bulletin might sound something like this. Good evening. My name is Miss Easthope and I'm reporting here from Chatham. Our top story tonight... Tutankhamun's tomb has been discovered. Early on the morning of 3rd of November 1922, Howard Carter, a British archaeologist, discovered the tomb of Tutankhamun. Tutankhamun was an Egyptian pharaoh from 1336 to 1327 BC and his tomb has lain undiscovered for over 3,000 years. After two months of waiting, Carter and his employer, Lord Carnarvon, were able to enter the tomb and discover the amazing treasures within. I have with me now Howard Carter himself. Good evening. Good evening, Miss Eastope. How did you feel on that fateful morning when you first discovered the tomb? It was just incredible. My team and I have been searching for this tomb for many years and we've begun to lose hope. The treasures inside were breathtaking and I feel proud to have found, had to have foundly discovered them. Just amazing. And what are you planning to do with the contents of the tomb? We are hoping that many of the artifacts will be kept safe in museums. This means many people will be able to see them for themselves and learn about Tutankhamun's life. What an amazing discovery. One that will surely be remembered as one of the greatest in history. Thank you for your time, Mr Carter. No problem, Miss Eastope. I have been Miss Eastope with Swingate Primary News. Thank you and good night.